If you haven't gotten your coffee yet, you have 30 seconds to get your coffee before we start. All right, so uh, like I said, Membership 101 workshop, first time we've ever done this. Uh, we should have been doing it earlier, um, but we are excited to do it. it. It seems necessary, it seems like a, a no brainer. And why wouldn't we wanna be kind of educating up our membership to take the most advantage? Uh, this is why uh, you know it's nonprofit life. So Eric and I aren't, aren't getting rich on the chamber. We love doing the stuff that we do. Uh, and we and we and we only love more and more and more engaged members. We get a kick. We get our energy, our passion out of engaged members. Um, and so, you know, please engage with us. Uh, fun little fact: uh, this little emblem down in the corner here, or down at the lower half, is going to be your membership sticker, which Erica will start to mail out the first of March. So be on the lookout for it in uh, your March mail. Uh, and you'll be able to stick that on any of your windows. If you need more or want more, let us know. And this year for the first time, we're actually gonna send around a digital copy. So uh, if you wanna put it on your website or share it on your Facebook uh, page or Instagram, uh, more to the fact of, you know, there really isn't a better business bureau and we often get calls and we have some members that require to be a part of the Chamber of Commerce just to um, give them kind of the accreditation they need to be a business in good standing with their community. So we see this, this badge of honor, uh, not just, hey, I'm a member and I got this sticker and I don't know where to put it, but, um, but people will notice it. They'll notice it on your website. They'll notice it on your front door. Uh, and Eric and I both know, we've, we've shouted this statistic from the rooftop, um, that consumers are 80% more likely to shop with you again if they know you're a Chamber of Commerce member. It's just one of those things. It's like shop small. People just love the concept of shopping small. They also love the concept that you're, you're a part of something bigger than just your business or your nonprofit. So uh, like I said, today we'll start with introductions. We'll do a chamber overview, ways to get most involved, and then we'll wrap up with some Q&A. What you'll find is Erica and I sprinkled Q&A throughout the workshop um, because we don't want you to stare at a screen for 45 minutes uh, and then expect you uh, to finish up questioning in five minutes. So we want this to be engaging for you. So let's start first by just getting into um, who you are. And I'll go around uh, the kind of the pixels here and call on you. And like I said, most of, most of all of us know each other, or at least Eric and I know you. So we're all friendly here, but give us your name, your organization, how many years in business as, or as a nonprofit it, it has been. The one thing you just hope to get out of today. And I'll start with you, Victoria, because you were, you were going already this morning. Um, Victoria Silsby, I am a longtime employee of the Collaborative. We're a nonprofit that uh, works to support healthy communities and uh, address uh, substance misuse um, issues, primarily trying to uh, keep youth and young people making healthy choices. Uh, the Collaborative has been around, it started as a after school program at Floodbrook School in Londonderry. So we're approaching like, I think we're in our 23rd year. We serve all of Bennington County, Western Wyndham, Southern Windsor and very, very Southern Rutland County. Um, and we are a small and mighty staff of seven and a half people. Great, yes. And we just had a great long conversation this past week uh, with some of that staff. So we were happy to uh, get connected. Thanks. I'm just gonna um, go offline a little bit. Yeah, My fine. computer needs charging. Okay. Uh, we're gonna hop right over to Karen O'Malley. Karen, if you wanna introduce yourself, your organization, how many years in business you've been or nonprofit? And then one thing you hope to get out of today. Oh, you're on mute, Karen. I work at At Home Senior Care. Um, at Home Senior Care has been in business for over 15 years. Um, they, the agency serves um, clients for home care for seniors up through the Middlebury from Bennington. Um, and um, I'm just on to say hello and see what's happening. Great. Okay, thank you, Karen. We'll hop over to Helen there, right down the road from us. 
Hello, Helen. Hi, uh, I'm Helen. I am I am Spectrum Design, and answering the question of how long I've been in business is a little complicated because Spectrum Design has been in business for several years. I took over this past September. Um, I am mostly hoping to get out of today just sort of the bare bones understanding of what participation as part of the chamber looks like and what I can get out of this and what I need to give in as well. Great, great. Helen, you've been a good partner even when you weren't owning Spectrum, so I had no <laughs> doubt um, that, uh, that, that you'd be there. And, and fun fact, uh, Helen actually helps us distribute. You've seen those uh, beautiful rack distribution. Uh, you've heard about the rack distribution program. We'll talk a little bit about that today. But the, the nice wooden racks kind of in Madison's and then all up through right over even to Bromley. Um, Helen is one of our suppliers that goes around and make sure they remain beautiful. Uh, so thanks, Helen. Uh, Lori, Lori Hurley, good morning. Good morning. My name is Lori Hurley and I am a realtor here in Bennington. Thanks to Helen making me look good. <laughs> um, and I've been in my, I've had my own brokerage for about two months now and I just like Helen I'm just looking to participate with our chamber and start to pay back because I certainly have enjoyed the services the information the, the you know all the things that you guys have offered yeah yeah and you've been a you've been a good partner uh even before you launched your firm uh so keep on keep on doing that um all right we'll hop over to Beth Beth Sturgeon, welcome. Very new member. Thank you. Yeah, very new. I think a month, maybe, maybe less. Um, Beth Sturgeon, I um, I'm with uh, Sturgeon Sustainability. It's, it's my own little consulting firm. Um, I do corporate sustainability consulting, so mainly greenhouse gas accounting and all of the data management that goes along with that um, for for big corporate clients. So. What I want to get out of today, I mean, sort of to echo Helen and Lori, I, I'm, I'm fully remote um, and I'm kind of looking to put down roots here. So today I want to, you know, hear what, what membership entails, kind of see, see how I can build my network here. Right. Welcome. Thank you. Nancy Kojal, um, new board member of the Chamber of Commerce. So welcome. Thanks, Matt. Um, so yeah, I'm Nancy Koziel. I own Couch and Cork. Um, I've been in business since 2019, although it really feels like 2020 was the start, which I'm sure most of us on this call feel. Um, I what was the other question? Um, what What do you want to get out of today? Oh, so I feel like there's probably a lot more with the website, like the Chamber Master website that I'm just not aware of. Um, and so that was one of the reasons I jumped on today. Right. And uh, share with us your business, too. Oh, so we do um, educational wine tastings uh, in home and venue based corporate um, we kind of do it all. Uh, so you may have seen us at the museum or Park McCullough House. Um, we also work with a couple of hospitality companies um, locally. Um, and we just for those on the call um, who are not familiar with us, we also um, promote responsible consumption. Uh, so it is not just a hey, let's, you know, get drunk. Um, we actually are education focused. Um, I serve um, as the business representative to ACT, which is the Alliance for Community Transformation. Um, and we do a lot to promote kind of alternatives to alcohol too. Yeah, which we just did for our annual meeting with Toast, our partner. Toast. Toast, yeah, about. exactly. Yeah. Uh, Nate, I think you're on. Uh, hey. Well, hey, Nate, are you, uh, are you already in the shop? I am, of course. Yeah. I figure, I figure. Nate, give us a little bit of a rundown of your business, how long you've been in business, and what do you hope to get out of today? So uh, my name is Nathan Johnson. I'm the owner of uh, Little Britain Fish and Chip Shop here in, down by the Four Corners. Uh, Little Britain has been around for 14 years, and we're I'm in my 10th year of ownership. Um, and to get out of today, I probably just same as everybody else, looking how we can maximize our chamber participation. Great. 
Great name. Fun fact with Nathan, he and I ran a Tough Mudder in what year? What year did we do that? 2016, 17, something like that? Over at Mount Snow? Mm, yeah, it was a little while ago. Yeah, it was <laughs> a little true. while ago. I'm not doing another one. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, John Niebick, am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, good morning. Uh, John Niebick. Um, I'm with Copper Star Insurance Services. I help uh, primarily uh, Medicare beneficiaries navigate uh, the Medicare maze and do a lot of work with Medicaid. Um, we moved here in June and took a couple months to uh, get everything uh, lined up uh, locally, but I've uh, been working in the area now uh, since November. Right, good. So. Um, I should mention, because I know uh, Erica is going to cut it off pretty soon, but we do have our first in-person mixer tonight at Park McCullough, mm -hmm. their new uh, stables that they opened up in the back end of the property. Um, so if you haven't gotten enough chamber uh, love in the morning at 8 a.m., uh, you can always join us there. I'm thinking of some of the new people on the call, if you're really looking to get going, uh, and start to meet people, not just on a Zoom call, but in person, and you're comfortable with that, please join us tonight at 5.30. Erica will uh, put up a link in the chat as well. I'll go over to Greta. Greta Witten. Uh, hi, I, like Karen O'Malley, work for At Home Senior Care. Um, she, as she said, we've been in business a little over 15 years with the current owner, Melissa Morrison, owning it for just about seven years. We do private duty home care from Bennington up to Middlebury. We have four different offices and about 150 employees. Um, and I'm on today just hoping to learn how to maximize and use the chamber membership to the best of our ability. Great, welcome. Jennifer Hoffman. Morning, everybody. Um, I just finished my workout, so I'm all yucky. Don't mind me. <laughs> you look great. Hey, yeah. I have my morning glow. Yeah. Um, so I am the broker owner of Hoffman Real Estate in North Bennington, Vermont. I am a Bennington native. I've lived here my whole life. Um, uh, let's see. Before I was in real estate, I got my master's degree in counseling and community psychology. So I worked in drug and alcohol counseling. Um, it's sort of a side passion of mine. Um, so why am I here? Um, I love events where I get to learn more about what the chamber does. I think it's one of those organizations where you can kind of like, it's like the internet, like you can keep searching and learning more, you know? So every time I show up, I learn something new that you guys offer as well as meeting new members and a lot of new members are on this call today. So I'm glad I'm here. Thanks. Eric and I had that same uh, thing that happens to us when we walk in the door every day too. We learn something new, even about the Chamber of Commerce. Um, <laughs> and you'll see where that kind of comes in handy in the next slide or two. Uh, we will update as much as you can about the origin story. Um, but um, there's not, <laughs> there's some, there's some shady kind of story around, you know, uh, where, uh, how we started and all that good stuff. So uh, the last two we want to get to is Denise Monty. I saw you hopped on. You might be in the car or in the shop, but say hello, uh, your organization, uh, which is making chocolates and, uh, and how long you've been in business, which is a great story. Uh, and then what you hope to get out of today. Uh, hi, sorry. I, I I couldn't find the link to get on earlier this morning. Um, oh, yeah. My name is Denise Monty. My parents own the Village Chocolate Shop on Main Street and the Village Peddler um, and Chocolatorium in East Arlington. So we are, I can't believe it, but this um, summer we're going to be celebrating 20 years in Bennington. Um, and our business in Arlington has been uh, 32 years. And I... Um, have been trying to log on to some of these meetings and things to learn a little bit more about what the chamber does because slowly um, I am not taking over my parents' business at the moment. They are still working hard and, and running things, but um, I feel like it's my time to start learning some of the services and things that are available to try to help um, 
be ready to take over when that time comes. Great. Great, Denise. Thanks for hopping on today. And then I think the last person would be uh, John Burnham, but last and not least, uh, John Burnham, director of the Manchester Business Association. Great to have you on this morning, John. Um, talk a little bit about the MBA for those that don't know about it. Good morning. Uh, good to meet you all. Some of you already know, but uh, thrilled to be here and thrilled to be a member of the Southwestern Vermont Chamber of Commerce. Um, so the MBA has been around since uh, late 2016, just uh, shortly after the Manchester and the Mountain Chamber closed, um, just for a little bit of history um, there. So how we all got together as business leaders in the community and created this organization. We are a destination marketing organization chamber. That's why the Southwestern Vermont Chamber of Commerce is so important to our county and our region. So we're thrilled to be part of this and support it in any way we can. And Matt and Erica and Kayla and I and the Shires of Vermont and the Better Bennington Corporation work together as often as we can to try to you know, promote our region and our community. And we're here to support each other. And if there's anything I can do to help you folks, please let me know. Yes, John has been a great partner and a great move for the MBA to have a, a paid person, a paid director on their staff. And it's been, it's been really helpful for us at the chamber. So thanks for hopping on. So we'll go through a little bit of the history. We'll take pauses. All of you should have this from your email. If you haven't, pull it out. It's just a guide. I'm not gonna check it at the end, but it may help guide you through this and help it be a little bit more interactive for you. And then of course, think of, of questions for Erica and me. Uh, Erica. I want to give you a chance to uh, say hello and introduce yourself, your time at the chamber, what you did before, um, anything else you'd like to share. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for hopping on so bright and early. Matt sent me a great little um, meme before we started this, which him and I both have a little bit of a radio background. So he sent the good morning Vietnam <laughs> shout out. So that will get you going. Um, I'm so happy to have uh, some of our strong proponents who participate in everything in the chamber and can speak to some of our new members about that. I'm glad John has joined us because for those of you who have been in the area for a while, you know that we expanded to be the Bennington County Chamber and that includes Manchester. So to see um, more and more of us between the North and the, the South create this collaboration. It, it's just amazing. It makes for a healthier business community and um, in our communities individually. So I hope that you are going to get some more insight into the chamber. I know that um, a lot of people sign up and go, okay, what's next? So this hopefully will answer it, but it at the end or during this, you have other questions or you want to speak offline, please just reach out to Matt or myself. Um, and we're happy to set up a meeting and grab a cup of coffee and talk some more. Great. Yes. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So, as I've said before, this is our first one. Uh, we'll be taking notes and kind of like, where do you start? This is <laughs> for Erica and me when we went into what a couple of weeks ago, Erica, we we're working on this, this kind of deck. Uh, and it kind of like, it, you know, I think somebody said, I learned something new every time I interact with the chamber, which means there's a lot going on at the chamber in general. And then, you know, just I think uh, our specific chamber, we have a lot going on for a variety of reasons. We'll share some of those. But where do you start? So we do want to know from you after this, shoot us an email. Hey, you know, you never really, I, you didn't talk about this. Or I think that that's another element that didn't even enter Matt and Erica's, you know, consciousness. So to so bring it forward for us. Uh, and, and we'll go on this trip together and then, you know, we'll make notes and ask questions and that sort of thing. So let's dive in um, and just uh, talk a little bit about what a Chamber of Commerce is, kind of how we structure it, what our vision for the future is. And then we, we have some time to uh, go back and forth and some questions. So um, we are a 501c6 uh, corporate nonprofit. So if anybody likes uh, legal jargon, it's a different than a 501c3. We are not, we cannot accept charity. We cannot accept donation. Uh, we can accept sponsorship, um, but we can't write it off. So you won't ever get a letter from us um, as a chamber. It, it will come later in something else. Um, but basically, a 501c6 is a membership-based uh, nonprofit. So uh, you know the MBA, um, the Shire's Young Professionals, 
If you're a membership-based thing, you pay dues, you're probably a 501c6. We are made up, we're an upside down organization, I often like to tell people. Uh, we are, our membership is at top. You make the decisions. You get to vote on the budget, you get to vote on the directors, you get to vote on the officers. Um, you pretty much could call me up any time and I probably have to come running to you and, and, and you know, meet you and that sort of thing. It's an upside down organization. We take our, our leadership and our direction from our members. Our members then elect directors, right? It's a little bit like the US. You know, we don't have time, Matt. We're running businesses, we're running nonprofits. We'd rather elect you know, smart people in our industry to represent us um, and they can meet with you more often and then we'll meet with you from time to time, especially around our annual membership meeting. So you all elect a board of directors and of those board of directors, you elect officers like any good nonprofit has. Uh, this chamber is also, you know, made up of a staff, but its backbone is in its volunteers, its partners and its stakeholders as well. When we look at partners, we think of the Better Bennington Corporation, the Manchester Business Association, the Bennington County Industrial Corporation, the Regional Commission, uh, ACT sometimes, Queer Connect. I mean, the partnerships go on and on. And it really is that uh, symbiotic nature of, of making the county move forward that we all work together in that way. Um, we also have stakeholders, right? We have our legislators. We have people that in general should just be interested in what the chamber does. Um, but I'd be remiss if I passed over staff too quickly. Um, we are a quite small uh, chamber of commerce, I think, especially for the amount that we do get done. Uh, you know, you have a full-time director. We'll talk a little bit about me uh, and, and that directorship a little bit later. You have Michaela, who, um, who is your event coordinator. Uh, and obviously all around getting, you know, everything prepared for everything that we do. And then we have Erica, who actually is part-time. Uh, so uh, Erica doing all the membership stuff, uh, doing the area guide, the travel guide, doing, um, you know, the membership invoice and the membership follow-up, the membership outreach to get new members, doing on classes like this. She all does it, folks, in 20 hours or less. So, um, so you got a very tight staff. Um, and, and, but that's kind of the makeup of the Chamber of Commerce. We were originally founded in 1912, although there's not a lot of documentation for that. Um, we do have a couple plaques that suggest that, um, but really, you know, so we, we sometimes say we're a hundred and some odd year old chamber because we were, except I think we went through some metamorphoses. And then we finally got incorporated uh, in 1959. Um, that became the Bennington Chamber of Commerce. It then became the Bennington Area Chamber of Commerce when we started to expand into places like Shaftesbury and Arlington, uh, like the Village Peddler would be a member. So we kind of say, well, it's Bennington and the greater area. Um, and then I think some of you on the call, but maybe not everybody, uh, I, I came on to the chamber around 2016. So I've been here about six years now. Um, and quickly after that, um, uh, the Manchester Chamber closed, uh, and at that point, the Arlington Chamber had already closed, and there were a couple, one or two other smaller ones that had closed years and years before. So we were kind of looking at this vacuum of, well, who's representing, and at that point, the MBA had been set up um, with, with any type of focus, whether it was going to be a, a destination marketing organization or something that got members together, businesses together to do mixers. So my board and I uh, went out on a vision to become a regional chamber of commerce, call ourselves the Southwestern Vermont uh, Chamber. We built a plan in 2017. We've shared it often with our members. Uh, and uh, at the annual meeting in 2020, we unveiled the new name and new logo, which you see on the, the membership sticker and all over the place. Um, but really our mission, and this is where your worksheet will come in handy because we have some blanks, so pay attention. Uh, but the mission of the Southwestern Vermont Chamber really hasn't changed even as we morphed into more of a regional chamber. And that is to promote, lead, and advocate a unified effort on behalf of our members, right? It like, starts at the top. You guys are at the top. Uh, to maintain and improve a healthy business climate and a re rewarding quality of life for the entire shires of Vermont region. And some of that has been added at the end uh, to uh, be copacetic with the region part. You know, and I often, I often say we have a couple of nonprofits on here. Nonprofits are interesting in Vermont. Uh, Vermont has the most nonprofits per like capita or population or something like that. Like Vermont is crazy with nonprofits. Uh, and we all kind of can shake our heads because we can think of 
a hundred of them and we're on half the boards of them. Um, but a chamber of commerce, commerce being the keyword, uh, is first and foremost always focused on a healthy business climate because we believe those healthy businesses can then support nonprofits and community and education and teachers and all that other stuff. And we also, I would say, we have a pretty um, broad approach to helping our nonprofits, partnering with our nonprofits. So it's not strict, but sometimes, you know, we always have to remind our, our, our membership or one or two nonprofits that, you know, want us to be doing every, every gathering, every mixer, every event with nonprofit in mind, when really currently, you know, it's still a chamber of commerce. We still believe in, in an uh, economic ecosystem uh, that uh, has capitalism, uh, that believes in selling a product or a service and making money off of it, um, while also supporting kind of those, those ancillary um, members around it. Um, 2023 vision, uh, more or less, is to grow businesses and enhance the Vermont economy, influence and foster stable growth to this region's creative ecosystem, assist in building safe and healthy communities, and market southwestern Vermont through people of all walks of life. Uh, through the Shires of Vermont brand. And there's a lot in there. So I think just some key concepts or themes to pull out that this board really worked on is obviously we want to grow the Southwest of Vermont economy. Yeah, Chamber of Commerce, got it. I think influence and foster a creative ecosystem is where the arts and culture and some of the nuanced members come in. Assist in building a safe and healthy communities that's where places like the collaborative and act and other things come in. Because here's the, here's the fact, we don't have good businesses if we can't attract good people here. And we can't attract good people here if we don't have a good community. And so, uh, you know, as much as the chamber has to focus on this kind of business ecosystem, we understand the importance of all the moving gears that, that need to happen. Uh, so kind of post Southwestern Vermont, gets unveiled 2020, we've been having this conversation at a board level about our enterprise model. And you'll see these enterprise models in the Albany Chamber of Commerce, you'll see them in the Lake Champlain Chamber of Commerce, you'll see them in the Vermont uh, Chamber of Commerce. Rutland is a whole other beast uh, because they have now melded with their uh, regional commission. So you've got, I think, the Rutland Regional uh, Economic Regional Commission and Chamber of Commerce all in, in one hub. But this is basically, hey, how do we grow the chamber without losing focus on our core? Uh, so when we talk about chamber of commerce and we're focusing on commerce and business, okay, that's what the chamber needs to focus on. But we also have these other entities that are actually really becoming other entities. They're not committees or groups under the chamber. They're actually their standalone businesses. Uh, so one of those, and we've had for a while, is our contract and partnership with the state of Vermont for running the Welcome Center on uh, 279. One, obviously that makes a total sense uh, uh, for partnership uh, through our marketing and welcoming efforts, uh, not just marketing and promotion like we would with the Shires of Vermont, but welcoming new families here too. And uh, PJ and her team up there, PJ reports to me and we'll have a picture of PJ in a minute. Um, but um, yeah, we have a staff of about eight or nine that kind of rotate in and out um, and they are, are constantly welcoming. People. So that's one of our that's one of our, our buckets. The Shires DMO, which used to be a standalone organization, has now fallen under the, the Chamber of Commerce. If anything, during the COVID pandemic, to protect it from uh, becoming extinct, uh, and then we're kind of regearing it up to be a 501c3. Uh, so it was a 501c6. So that'll start to be kind of our charitable arm, our foundation arm, and that will have a focus on the regional brand. Uh, you know, I, I joke with my board, we've become so lean that I'm posting on Instagram all the photos. Uh, I'm an executive director that should be, you know, working with our members to grow their businesses. I should, I'm not sure I should be spending a lot of my time posting pretty pictures on Instagram for Shires of Vermont. So eventually the evolution there is uh, we want to grow that business organization, that nonprofit. Uh, and so some of the things that fall under that are the Vermont marketing that we do, the Shires RAC program that I talked earlier about. And eventually even uh, Erica's work with the Shires Travel Guide. Now that will all fall under kind of promotions and, and advertising. And then finally, the young professional group. And we view that, I'll never forget, you know, when we were in a retreat in a meeting um, and 
And we decided that one of the ways that we were gonna keep this chamber alive was to have a pathway to leadership. Um, and that pathway to leadership was gonna to have to start at the bottom. It was gonna to have to start with a young professional. And we, we pictured a 21 year old by moving to Southwestern Vermont, getting involved and in how does that 21 year old someday become the president of the board of directors for the chamber. And that's really where the young professional uh, group uh, came to being. Uh, we've supercharged it. It has now become a 501c6 itself. Beth Wallace is the chair there. Uh, but we also look to them for not just mixers or social gatherings, um, but for retention and recruitment efforts too. You know, we, they're probably the, they're the front line when it comes to welcoming new families uh, to the area. So uh, we're investing in them as well. Most of you know our team, we've talked about them, but uh, Erica and McCall, Michaela and PJ DeVito are our core staff. And then, like I said, we have uh, you know eight to nine up at the Welcome Center at any given time. They are all not there at the same time. Usually, we do batches of two, and they go throughout the week on a certain schedule. I'll pass it over to Erica now. She's going to talk a little bit about just the membership in general. Who are our members? What are they made up of? And then uh, take it away, Erica. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Um, so currently, we have three hundred and eighty due paying members and they're made of a variety of um, businesses. The largest portion that you'll see um, in the next slide is our service sector. And these are people like accountants, real estate agents, um, dentists, financial um, services. So that is the largest portion of our membership. You'll see lodging food, shopping could be the chocolatorium, it could be the village peddler and antique shops. Uh, our attractions, you know, we have a lot of things to do here. Uh, most of those are non-profit attractions um, such as the theaters or the museum, things of that nature. But we have a very um, eclectic group, those services, is a majority of it, you know, when you whittle down what services are, there's a lot of th different things in there. Um, I, I was going to add, Erica, too. Yeah. Um, often our, our, what do I want to say, our most passionate members tend to be what our travel and, and um, tourism members. And when you start to add those up, uh, lodging, dining, shopping and attractions, they start to be as big as the services. So we're often going back and forth with um, efforts like Garlic Town and the travel guide for our uh, kind of travel and tourism, while also providing lunch and learns and other gatherings for uh, people in the service ones. Um, so the next slide, um, Matt, is uh, who makes up our membership. And wow, if this doesn't show you that small businesses are the heart of a community, <laughs> um, a very interesting graphic. You'll see that the business model with one to four people is 90 members out of 390. And overall from uh, a single proprietor, which is the zero business employees up to less than 10 makes up 67% of our membership. So I think it's very interesting to see that, um, you know, it's mom and pop, not mom, you know, mom and pop from Jay's at Jay's cards to those just starting off uh, like the W Collective last year. So it is still the backbone of the economy, not only, you know, throughout the United States, but it's very evident in small towns here in Vermont. So um working with our smaller business sector is, you know, very, very important to us because um, you're the ones who are bringing people into the area. You're the ones who are spending money into the area. You're providing jobs for individuals. Um, so we're very, we're very protective of our, our group and we appreciate all of you that have joined with us. Um, so what do we have? What do our members say? Now, Matt and I uh, send out a survey 
once a year to, it's the State of the Chamber Membership Survey. You all get it. Um, and this year we had a, a great number of responses because we can't, we can't move forward to help you if we don't know what you need help with. So we really, and I know that sometimes, you know, a 40 question survey, you're just like, ah, not today. But I wanna thank everybody who did take the time um, to fill that out because um, again, this is your chamber as Matt said. So we need to know what we can do to elevate you and to help you. And so what was very exciting We'll blow our own horn here a little bit. 91% of our members say they are satisfied or extremely satisfied with how the chamber is meeting their needs. I, I don't think we have seen that number that high since um, I've been here. I've been here only three years. Matt's been here longer, but um, that was very encouraging to see that people are uh, not only looking at what we're doing, but actually taking that and putting it forth and using the tools that we are sending them. 0% of the members indicated that there was less than acceptable or disappointed in how we do any of our work. So uh, again, very encouraging <laughs> and makes us feel um, we're doing what we need to do for our members. And I know we have a lot of communication. It, at the beginning of the pandemic, it was every three days because that's how things were changing and so quickly. And there was a lot of information to get out um, as far as like PPPs and whatever the mandates were at that time and uh, how you could open your doors or do curbside service. So there was um, a lot of communication then. I know some of it was overwhelming, but um, most people indicated that, you know, thank God you guys are putting this out there because we didn't know where to look for it. And if we didn't have the answer, they sent us a message and um, we found, you know, we find out who has that answer or make that connection for you. So do we have all the answers? God, no, but at least we're willing to find out how we can find the answer for you and, you know, get that communication out to you. This so slide also great. reminds me, Erica, um, you know, I, I think we, we do pride ourselves on uh, trying to be as data-driven and fact-based as possible. And I don't think you always see that with all the organizations or even all the chambers. Um, you know, we, we, we always have a gadfly somewhere in the community. And now that we're representing 17 communities, there's one or two throughout the county. Um, and and I, I often find, or right in our membership, and there's this, you know, we may feel or we have an opinion that it went this way. And, you know, I think we're, we're good at saying, when we measured our membership, we often do, we do it anecdotally, we do it narratively, just like today, we do it by a, a survey. Just last week, um, we put out the poll about the health of businesses and their optimism for the next year. Um, you know, I don't want to suppose how I think uh, five businesses feel because I had coffee with them last week and then say, well, yep, all the businesses think it's great. And I'd rather fight off those naysayers by saying, look, I, I don't know what you're bringing to the table, but we're bringing data and facts and things like that. Uh, I often think, you know, and Eric will probably laugh at this, our, <laughs> our internal business model is definitely start up on the verge of productive paranoia. I am constantly <laughs> paranoid that a member is not going to be happy where we didn't do something for this one segment and we're constantly building chocolate crawls or sweet crawls, uh, women's leadership luncheon, uh, repivoting garlic town. And that probably comes from all three of us on the staff, Michaela, Eric, and Matt being a little bit of paranoid and a little bit productive. And when we get that going, uh, we can do some good stuff. So this, this slide always reminds me of just how fact-based we try to be and, and driven. Uh, while also reading all the comments you leave us uh, in those surveys, which is a lot, which we want to <laughs> ask for, but it is a lot sometimes. How does the chamber run? Um, for the most part, we're a pretty open book policy here. Again, membership starts at the top. So you have a right to see the budget. You have a right to vote on that budget. You have a right to ask me about P&L, uh, you know, the profit and loss. And if you have questions, uh, I'm pretty confident. I meet with, you know, our finance at half of our finance team once a week and the full finance team every month. Um, 
And, uh, and yeah, this is kind of the breakdown of what, of what we're looking at for 2022 uh, in terms of full membership, what the travel guide brings in, sponsorships, Garlic Town obviously being our largest fundraiser. We'll talk a little bit about that. The commissions from insurances, believe it or not, dental and vision, what the Welcome Center brings in, what you'll see is the Welcome Center brings in as much as it brings out. Uh, so <laughs> it's more of a service there than anything, but we'll talk a little bit about that. And then we have the miscellaneous, which might be grants or interest or anything like that. Um, the majority, you know, we'll also just get into this in the next couple of slides, but events driven fundraising is very important to us, uh, as is membership. Uh, and then you kind of go down that line between sponsorship insurances, advertising, and other, but that's kind of how that all breaks down. I want to pause there. Any questions so far? Uh, and we're going to get into a place where we can kind of pause along each path and have a conversation. But any questions, anything we didn't cover, you're like, well, I didn't, you know, didn't know this or that. Okay, great. So let's okay, hop in. You, one minute. The, you talked about the RAC pro program, but I, I don't actually know what it is. Yep. Um, okay. We will, that's one of the next slides, but it's going to, we're going to brush over it very quickly. So was that, uh, I can't see, but was that you, Beth? Yep. That? that was me. Yeah. If you're going to okay. get to it, that's fine. Yeah. And, and like I said, we're going to glance over it uh, and not give it enough due diligence, but basically the Shires of Vermont RAC program is about, and Helen can speak to this too. It's about 20 or 30 racks sprinkled throughout the region, really on route 7A almost. Uh, and I think the village uh, chocolate shop has, or village peddler might have one and I, Madison's has one and the museum has one and it goes all up to Route 7 all the way to Bromley. Um, and basically um, it was the impetus of it was it was a fundraiser for the DMO, that destination marketing organization that runs the Shires brand. But it was also kind of innovative in the sense that uh, larger brochure rack companies were putting racks throughout the county that sent people out of the county. Like, hey, go to Sugarbush, go to House Caverns, go to like, it was like, go to New York, go to Massachusetts, go to Northern Vermont. And none of it, because basically our, our smaller businesses can afford to be in those racks. So the team before me in that DMO group started the rack program, uh, which is usually quite affordable compared to uh, the, the larger people, but it also focuses you know, if you're stopping at the Bennington Museum, there's probably a rack there for Hawkins House, a rack for Madison's, a rack. So you're kind of like, okay, I'm in Bennington and I'm looking at racks of the Bennington area. So that's what that is. And we can send you a link, Eric, if you want to um, send a link in the chat for anybody that has more questions. There's a web page for it. You can read through it and you can sign up for months or a year. Um, so that's what that is. And to be honest, Beth, I, I'm not sure that would be a real big fit for you. That's more yeah. of a travel and tourism. Thing. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I, I, I just didn't know what it was, but yeah, I, I get it now. So. Yeah, feel free. Yeah, any of these questions. I think somebody had a question about what does DMO mean? Yeah, ask that away. Destination Marketing Organization. Um, okay, any other questions? I'm not looking at the chat yet, but okay. So, um, like I said, there was many ways to skin this cat called the Southwestern Vermont Chamber of Commerce, many ways to explain it, but uh, Eric and I kind of came up with this model. Obviously all the circles are feeding into one another, um, but when we were to say, what is the Chamber of Commerce? Um, what do we do? What do we do every single day? Uh, we actually have mugs around our office that have this quote on it, partner advocate for Nectar and Catalyst. Um, something we cheekily, cheeky came up with couple uh, years ago, but basically I was trying to break it down for the staff um, really simple and say, look, we partner with people. Any opportunity there is a place to partner or even to go, you know, have them come 51% for our 49%, we will take the 49%. I believe that that is part of our mission as a nonprofit. Um, we will advocate and we'll get into some of what that means when we talk about advocating. We connect. Um, it is, it, it, it's almost like the simplest thing but when I explain it to most uh, businesses, they're like, of course, that makes sense. Oftentimes when you're running a business, you're in your vertical, right? You've got your vertical thing that you have to focus on. You gotta make the chocolates, you gotta buy the chocolate, you gotta 
you got to package the chocolate, you got to get the customers in the door, you got to do billing, you've got to hire staff. Those are all your vertical. That's vertical integration of a business. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm running a real estate company, I'm running a chocolate shop, I'm running a consulting business, and I have my vertical. So when are you all thinking about connecting with your peers? When you're or like, are you, is that part of your business model is to like, hey, 30 out, you know, if I have 40 hours, 60 hours, I'm working on my business every month, every week, I'm, I'm focusing five to 10 hours on connecting with other businesses, learning about partnering. Really, I mean, from a, from a business perspective, I think there's competitive advantage to knowing more people, having more leads, more referrals, more people that maybe you can partner together. And we've seen that happen with chocolate and wine before. But who, you know, are you guys focusing on that? Of course not. That's why you pay a due to this chamber for us to be your horizontal. And that's what I often say to, the, to our staff and our board. You got your verticals and we respect those verticals. You have to market, you have to have customers. We want you focusing on that 99% of the time. We will focus on providing the gathering places or the kind of additional complementary ways you can promote, get a little bit more educated in your business, maybe do some more economic development so that you have partners in your, you know, for some of us who have been in Bennington for 30 years, remember what Bennington used to look like, remember what Bennington was 10 years ago, five years ago, where it is now, and it's really exciting, right? And I think there you could probably speak to Manchester that way too. But, you know, we need, we need you to have buddies, uh, we need you to have other coffee shops and other places to do things. So development is important. Um, are there ways that we can complement your promotion? Uh, first thing that Eric and I often talk about with marketing is we're not your marketing. You should be doing your marketing. If we can complement your marketing, we want to do that. And then we think we have some creative ways to kind of help you do that. Uh, and then advocacy, right? Just as a small business in Vermont, um, how are we making sure you're educated about who your legislators are, if you want to have a conversation, what laws are coming into effect, so on and so forth. So that's what I mean when we kind of, we can be your vertical to kind of organize this for you so you can focus on the bigger part, which is your business. Uh, and then Kat, Matt, Matt, I just want to interject when you yeah. said advocacy, I'll remind everyone that Monday, we do have that mid-session legislative update with our state and local legislators who will let you know um, what bills they're working on, um, where they are at this mid-session point. So that's Monday at eight o'clock. And if you can make it, it's always, um, it's a great opportunity to yeah. just know what's happening in the business world as far as on a legislative level. And it also gives you access to your legislators. So it's a yeah, and you, and you have a great group. You have a real great group of, of legislators and they're very, I'm always surprised at how um, candid they are. I mean, they'll tell you <laughs> what and why and how they voted on things and why they did it. And kind of the banes of, having a legislative uh, democracy, even in Vermont. Um, so yes, please join us for that as well. Um, let's hop into each one of these and then we'll have a place to kind of pause at each one and answer any questions. So we'll hop right into events. That's kind of the easiest one, maybe the one sometimes the Chamber of Commerce is most well known for. Um, and we kind of just said, look, why do we do this? And we're trying to be as candid as those legislators I just talked about. But basically events for us, first and foremost, have to make money and they have to fundraise for the Chamber of Commerce so that we, A, subsidize your membership dues, we can invest in the future growth of the Chamber. And we also think, I think the, the altruistic part of the event is we do believe it creates a dynamic community. And you'll see that with our Winter Homebrew Festival, our Summer Homebrew Festival, um, our Garlic Town. And then this kind of B2B Golf Classic is kind of another version of that event. And it's not completely community driven, but it's community driven within our own membership. So every June we do a golf classic and our members and this year, you know, MBA is gonna partner with us up uh, in, at the Equinox in June. Uh, we're gonna invite all the members there. So, um, but basically um, we do that partially because your dues would be more. So if you're paying 350 or 450, um, if we didn't have, you know, a, an 80 to $90,000 uh, garlic town or fest or anything like that, you have to get that money somewhere. So um, if and when you can volunteer for those um, festivals, A, it's really fun. B, we give you a lot of cool swag, a lot of cool drink and food. C, it's one of the best ways I have found to grow leadership and just business connections 
there's nothing. And, and I think Jen, you've done it before and Nancy, and I, like there's nothing like pounding stakes in a field uh, or doing parking with Mike McKenna, Tom Daly, Bill Devigno, like you're going to meet people. Uh, and it's, and it's not forward, right? You're not salesy because you're just pounding stakes or you're doing something and you can kind of have a general conversation and all of a sudden, you know, Bill Devigno is your lawyer. Um, but, um, but also invest in the chamber future too. So, you know, we, uh, part of what we said in our annual meeting when we were showing some of the, the, the numbers of our, you know, our savings and how we're growing that savings. One of the jokes I made was don't stop paying your membership dues because this is just the start. You know, if you think of the Lake Champlain Chamber of Commerce, they're about a $2 million operation. We're, we, with our Welcome Center, is about a $500,000 operation. The Vermont Chamber is like $1.5 million. So if and when we were to grow those fundings, we'd be able to hire more people. We'd be hiring, you know, uh, an economic developer. We could hire a small business advocate. We could hire uh, support for Erica and her membership. Um, you know, so there's ways we can grow. So when you're thinking about this, absolutely fun. We love Garlic Town. We love Garlic Fest. We love Winter Home Brews. Um, but also there's a, there's a mission behind that. Um, so with that, I want to pause, have a group chat with y'all and say any, any questions on that. Maybe I'll pop us out of share mode so we're a little bit more familiar. Um, around events, any questions? And if not, then we'll pop back in and keep going, but we want to give you guys time to talk a little bit. Jen. So um, I'll just sort of share anecdotally that I volunteered for Garlic Town for the first time last year, and I had a blast. And Good. that's your soul because that was crazy, but I'm glad you're excited about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm obviously crazy. So um, uh, I will say that uh, I loved the pre- uh, meeting that we had at Ramonto's. It was just casual. And I think part of it was COVID, right? Like we'd all been cooped up for like a year and a half, basically. And so it was like this first big opportunity to gather. So part of that, I think, contributed to the excitement of all of it. But um, so I was a field marshal. I had my little walkie talkie thing. And like, I had a specific job and I'm really good when I have a task. Uh, so I liked that job. Uh, and Nancy and I kind of uh, ping ponged at the end of the day to direct people not to go where they weren't supposed to go. Um, I like being in charge. Um, and so <laughs> I think it was just really kind of fun to find a role that fit. Yeah. And I only volunteered for like a two hour block, but I think I was there for a total of like six hours that day because I just kept coming back. I was like, this is a really fun event. So if you're thinking, you know, how can I contribute, you know, think about what those volunteer opportunities are in advance and what's going to really feel rewarding to you and, you know, volunteer for the right fit. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jen. And Garlic Town, um, Nancy maybe can appreciate this because she just, you know, bought up half the wine industry, but like was a runaway train at a certain point. Uh, and that point was 7 a.m. in the morning, three hours before the gates open. And I remember running around with Michaela and just being like, there are just certain things that aren't going to get done because, you know, you're all on this time thing. And in years past, when we've done it up at Camelot, for those that know that you've had a whole week, right? You kind of block out Camelot, you take it over, you put up tents and that sort of thing. Um, this was downtown Bennington. So you had to do it a little bit differently. We did the best we could with Thursday and Friday, but Saturday started at 4 a.m. and by 7 you just knew, um, you know, vendors were moving in regardless of if we had their things set up or anything like that. So uh, it was kind of crazy. I, you know, I don't think we expected 8,500 people to show up to Bennington. Uh, maybe we thought maybe a little bit more around six. Um, so it was fun. Uh, you know, we, we, we've shared the stats before, you know, our downtown businesses had 50% to 100% more profit than they have in any Labor Day that they've ever had. Um, and, it, you know, I think everybody, like you said, Jen, we're just done with the pandemic. And as long as we were safe and moving about and keeping people safe, I think people really enjoyed it. We have a great video of, of the event. But yeah. Good. I mean, along those lines, I'll just say that I think for those of us who did volunteer, since you are going to do it downtown again, which I think it's fantastic. I think it's a great way to bring more business to the downtown merchants who are the bread and butter 
365 um, and not just on that one day. So I love that it got moved downtown, but I would love to say, you know, if there's an opportunity to give more feedback to sort of help be more involved yes. in the planning side of it and or sort of logistics, I would love to contribute to that. because Watch out, Jen. You're gonna be I know. As, I... <laughs> you're going to be hired as a captain. Boom. Captain. Which I don't think Jen would, hi Jen would hate at all. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, that is, um, again, Garlic uh, Town and Fest is one of those things that's a crazy monster of, uh, Michaela just started working on it, you know, so we do it in Labor Day weekend in September. She'll start working in January on it. That'll become 80% of her job um, through the rest of the year. Um, but it takes 150 volunteers, about 12 captains. Um, but yeah, downtown's kind of a real fun uh, uh, head scratcher of a problem to solve, but it was really good. Um, and Denise, I know you had a question here. Can you explain the difference between the BBC and the chamber? Sure. Um, easily, the BBC has a, is a taxing district organization, which means that you pay, a, you know, and I think the chocolate shop and, and other shops, and I think they're trying to expand that district, which I'm actually in favor of, because I think more people benefit from downtown than just downtown businesses. Um, so I think they should expand the taxing district and, and have more money flow through the BBC. But the BBC or Better Bennington Corporation um, is set up to support specific to the downtown. So almost to the point where, you know, if you know your downtown, it's basically the Blue Bend Diner to the old Friendly's gas station on South Street. I tend to think of it going all the way up to the museum because I do so much partnership with the museum on, uh, on West Main all the way down to about Benner's. It's probably, you know, Benner's, Cat TV area, Stewart's is probably your direct downtown. Anything within that kind of epicenter is covered by the BBC. And much like the NBA, um, you know, where we can partner, we'll partner. Um, it is great to have somebody that's focused specific on, to me, there's, we're representing 17 towns but Bennington has a heartbeat and Manchester has a heartbeat. And if you could imagine two and a half staff members trying to manage the heartbeats of those two uh, Shire towns, our, our main economic centers, um, we need more help than, than we currently have. And so I think for Jenny to be there, keeping an eye on downtown businesses specifically and doing programmatic things for them specifically um, is great. I think she's doing some Shamrock, St. Patty's Day Shamrock thing, which is going to be great, which means we don't have to, we can focus on something else. Uh, and then John up in Manchester, being able to focus on really that heartbeat too, while we can come alongside with the Shires of Vermont brand and help support, um, provide additional educational programming or um, do some more of the advocacy piece. Like John said, he's much more of a destination marketing organization. If we can provide more legislative places that people can meet and talk to their legislators or, um, or a conference or anything like that, that may be more of a role that we serve. So um, that is the difference. Uh, mm -hmm. Other questions around that, Nancy? Uh, if I could just also speak to that. I sit on the board of the BBC. Um, <clears throat> and so the big thing there too is kind of the focus on downtown design. So things like signage, the river walk, um, any sort of like beautification projects, um, economic vitality, and then really the promotion of events versus the promotion of businesses. I know a lot of times we get questions saying, shouldn't the BBC be promoting my business, but it's more of promoting the downtown character. Um, and that in that region that Matt explained, it's the property owners, so the landlords, are taxed. So if you own a business downtown and you don't own the business, you don't pay dues. Your the property owner pays the tax and that's your dues. And just recently we have expanded it to allow for people kind of outside because there's like that whole stretch up to Henry's where there are businesses. Um, we've we've added a membership tier so that people who aren't necessarily within the DID, the downtown improvement district boundaries can join and get the same um, benefits as those who own properties right there. Uh, I see another question around ambassador program. At the very least, and I think that was you, Denise, too, at the very least, all our welcome center people have to go through ambassador program. They're all certified ambassadors um, if they want to work at the state welcome center. Um, and oftentimes we've talked about it, Eric and I have talked about it, when we would go to the Big E 
or New York Times travel show. We don't do that as much anymore, um, but we've talked about us both getting certified in that ambassador program. But I, I'd yeah. like to just um, advocate for that program. It um, even before the pandemic and before we were all doing things online, it was an online program, yeah. and it really it's um it's a at home you know open book test right so you're going online yes, and yes. they ask you questions and then you have to search and i have to tell you regardless of our business i learned so much about the history of vermont and things that there were to do um and you know they did have a thing on customer service and hr like they had a couple of you know technical things but it's free and i highly recommend it for everybody you know there it's you don't even have to do it all in one sitting. And I, I highly recommend it for all businesses. Great. Um, let's keep moving along. We've got a couple more slides. We want to make sure that we pause and give you guys time to talk. If everybody's OK, we're going to try and get you out of here around 930. Might be a little bit after. If you do have to hop off, please do. Um, the next part of the wheel is uh, education. Uh, and this is somewhat new since I came in. When I, when I entered the Bennington Chamber, uh, and any really, Vermont Chambers are uniquely different than, um, than other chambers, even as close as Albany and Saratoga, in the sense that we are somewhat extensions of the Vermont Tourism Department. We don't get funding by that. Uh, no one would ever tell you that. But if you were to look at who represents your regions, your towns, there is a close relationship with BDTM, Vermont Department of Tourism and, Tr and Marketing, and Chambers of Commerce or DMOs. Uh, and so what you find at least with chambers is they tend to be very, very focused on travel and tourism and throw you a mixer every now and then, right? And that, if I remember, I remember being a small business in Bennington, that's what the Bennington Chamber kind of felt like. As opposed to when I would go to the Albany Chamber, or Saratoga Chamber, is very much membership 101, um, you know, marketing classes, accounting classes, so on and so forth. So when I became the director, one of the initiatives was to round out that pie a little bit more equally. Um, you know, uh, we have, as, as you saw, the pie says 56 and 58 percent of our members are service based, which means by and large, they don't really care about travel and tourism. They like Garlic Fest. They like participating in Garlic Fest, but they're not waiting for that tourist to come to Garlic Fest so they can sell them pizza or chocolate or coffee. Um, so we, so part of our work in the last years has been to round that out and say, hey, if you were to start a business, if you were a young business, if you wanted to get reintroduced to a new business, you know, what what were some of the things we could create? And so what we did with with the team was create coffee and conversations um, when we could meet in person. Um, one of the newer things we've created is EDU webinars, which is much more of a, of a two to three hour webinar. What we heard was lunch and learns are great, but we only start to touch kind of the surface of the problem or the challenge. Could you offer kind of a more in-depth, dense webinar or workshop where I'm actually like learning and changing my Facebook page and uh, doing whatever the other you know, marketing person or Instagram person telling me to do. So we've, we've started to play around with those EDU webinars. Uh, we have one coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks about uh, the top three ranking websites and what we're calling spring cleaning. Uh, so you could join Julia Scott and myself on that. Um, and we're also looking for one in the fall as well. Uh, and we don't want them to all be marketing. We think, you know, if we find a really dynamic finance person or nonprofit person, then that might be a, a fruitful uh, deep dive for people. Membership 101, which you're on today. Lunch and Learns, um, which we've done in the past. Again, we're just feeling our membership out at the moment and saying, does that hour long thing help? You know, is it nice to get together, but everybody zoomed out? Do they want to do more in depth webinars? We're, we're feeling that one out. Uh, membership roundtables, and we're going to have those come back. If you go to the advocacy page that I think Erica put up, uh, you'll see that we're going to have industry roundtables in, I think, April, uh, maybe March. Can't remember, but um, they're, uh, we've broken them up a little bit differently this, this time. So each time we like to get people on an hour and a half, and we have that kind of intimate. Uh, somewhat candid conversation around services, around uh, uh, travel and tourism industry. Uh, so we'll have those again. Uh, as I said tonight, first in-person networking mixers. 
Um, and we also include in there, you know, we do a lot of work with the SYP socials too. We're doing the St. Patty's Day uh, pub crawl uh, in uh, March 19th. Uh, we do a lot of other socials where we're introducing anybody under the age of 40 uh, to the next, you know, restaurant, the next uh, coffee shop, that sort of thing. And then one of the things we also launched, and I do include this somewhat under the education, um, if you go to that advocacy page, uh, you can now schedule a meeting with me when you want to. You actually get my schedule, or at least the, the bubbles of the hours that I'm available, and you could click on it and it would send me, uh, hey, Jen wants to connect with you for a one-on-one, -on -one, and we could talk about your business, we could talk about membership benefits, we could talk about anything. And again, it's just trying to break down some of the Zoom, or break down also some of the walls that might kind of pop up even, even as friendly as Eric and I are. Um, uh, so, I just, oh, sorry, yeah, I just wanted yeah, to yeah, add that any of these things that you do attend, um, expand your network, not, you know, professionally and personally, and you get to meet other business owners. So when you're talking, you actually end up like Matt and I becoming ambassadors for businesses that you own and vice versa. People who learn about you when they're talking with friends, relatives, business partners, um, they say, hey, yeah, you know, I, I, I spoke with Jen, I, I, I spoke with Victoria, I spoke with Denise. So these are great things to attend, be a part of, and not only get to know other businesses, but let other businesses know about you so that we can all keep working together. I'm big, I'm sorry, I'm always about the collaborative. No, that's, that's my thing. That's <laughs> so. If you've been following along on your worksheet, we're now down at this bottom. Part. So be thinking about if you do have questions about this, either to ask us directly or shoot us an email or just even jot a note of something you want to get involved with. You know, Erica has been good at putting the links in, in the show notes to so click on those. But let's pause here. Anything around education um, and anything, you know, here's I, I come from a background of training and education. So I'm always interested in just like any angle we're missing, um, anything that you, you know, you have a captive audience, captive audience. So anything you want to see that we haven't done yet or haven't done in a while? I'll bump it out uh, for us to uh, have that conversation. I'll just say, I think you guys have been giving a, a a greater focus on this, the things like myself and Lori, like we're new business owners, you know, so what are, what are the things that we need to be successful? So I do try to take advantage of as many of those learning opportunities as I can. Um, you know, I'm, for example, my bookkeeper that I hired, I met here at one of your events last winter. Um, I was becoming an escort, which meant I needed to put myself on payroll. That is way above my knowledge base. I got no idea how to do that. I am not an accountant. I'm not a bookkeeper. And so I've hired um, someone to do that for me uh, because of an event that you guys put on teaching me the basics. So that it introduced me to someone who could help me uh, in my business. Yeah, and Jen, you bring up a good point because I'll go back to my productive paranoia. Um, I often, I have to remind myself that and then I remind our staff that, that, you know, some of our job is just to make the connection. Again, that we're the horizontal. You wouldn't normally be doing that, but if we can get, so I don't have to answer your bookkeeping question. Sometimes like, I'm like, oh man, you know, how to start a business. We just got one of those last week, you know, want to start a business in panel. How do I do it? Okay, where to start? Um, as opposed to saying, wait a minute, our job is to connect. You do not have to have all the answers. If we did a workshop on starting a small business, that might be interesting, that might be cool. We could hire, we could bring a panel in or whatever, but probably more importantly, getting you in touch with an attorney, getting you in touch with, you know, uh, uh, somebody else that, that does this. And so, you know, it, it's a good reminder for us constantly to say, we, we, we're in the power of connection. As, you know, Erica said, collaboration and connection, you know, that's actually where, both Eric and my strengths are we're not we do not have a strength in starting small businesses uh somebody else does or reading the law um so thank you for adding that uh Erica other things you want to add to this I I, I recognize that I gave you this slide and then I took it away from you so um you'll get the next one <laughs> let me unmute myself no uh you covered it and then I added what I needed to there at the end so I want to uh, be mindful of time and try and get us out of yeah. here at at um, 9.30. So let's just keep chugging along. If you have questions, please uh, 
please let us know. We've got about, you know, we're going around the circle here. Um, one of the things we've really stepped our toe into uh, in the last couple of years uh, has been economic development. I just kind of call it development in general because we may be working with the collaborative on a community effort. We may be working with, you know, the comprehensive economic development strategy, which is that SEDS program down there, which is an EDA program. We may be working, you know, we, we at one point in Manchester, I remember we brought uh, the people that had already invested in the Putnam project and we brought some investors from Manchester into a room together. And we were looking for that last little bit of funding to get the, the Putnam project off the ground. And there were some great Manchester business owners um, that did that. Uh, and so that to me, again, you won't read about that in the paper, but that is where our connections, our knowledge, our relationships can help move some of the economic development forward. We also, you know, we, 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 we recognize there are different kind of spearheads, uh, BBC being the one for downtown, MBA being the one for Manchester, perhaps you know the BCRC or BD, you know BCRC being the Bennington County Regional Commission or the Bennington Development uh, Corporation. You know, we will always kind of listen to our partners there and ways that we can help. Um, but we're also invited to the table. We look at the Energizer reuse. You know, what are they going to do with the big Energizer building in Bennington? Well, we've been a part of those conversations. Part of the other development, and as many of you know at the current moment, in terms of our, our, our small businesses and economic situations, you're all looking for more workers. And so um, four years ago, we partnered with the state of Vermont on the state of state program, which absolutely was about adding families and to community. But really, from a chamber of commerce perspective, it was about getting bodies into southwestern Vermont. So Matt Willie can have more people work at all his restaurants or so, uh, you know, so we can have more people uh, participating in the workforce. So that's part of that state of state program. We're continuing to do that. We're actually going to have uh, an in-person weekend on Memorial Day weekend. It's going to be fun. And we're going to show off uh, uh, Mayfest uh, to our, our travelers. Um, and on the back end of that, we also have a partnership with the Vermont Welcome Wagon Project, which is once you move here, how do we get you to stay here? And you only stay here, quite frankly, honestly, very simply you make friends. It's not your job. Unfortunately, Jen and Erica, it's not even your house all the time. It is, did I make five friends? And so our job at the Vermont Welcome Wagon Project is to connect people with at least five people to go out for a coffee, have a drink, zoom in, whatever. Um, part of that development, again, when I think of development, it's really about bolstering the, the business part of your business or nonprofit. So we look at the benefits packages. Uh, whether that's dental, vision, 401k, you know, those, those packages, if we can continue to, to, to mobilize kind of these beneficiary packages for our members, we will. Part of the power should be, it's not always this, but it should be the fact that you all as small businesses can't, you can't argue, you know, kind of the, the insurance policies, but maybe if we collectively bring you together and you represent a larger thing, like membership in a chamber of commerce, you then have bargaining power to talk about dental, vision, insurances, that sort of thing. That's the, that's kind of the argument of those benefit packages. Um, and then, you know, COVID relief. Uh, you know, I think that, that was a huge, you know, just our ability to communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, and it felt like, you know, so there were days where we communicated, then the BBC communicated, then the BCRC communicated. I'm like, what are we all doing here? <laughs> but I will say one thing that became very apparent um, to me and Erica was we have instant access to 380 engaged members. Um, BBC, like uh, Nancy said, kind of owners of buildings are members. I'm not sure how robust their list is. Definitely, they're more of a door-to-door -door personality. Um, and other uh, uh, corporations in and agencies around the community, I wouldn't say have a dedicated uh, 380 member uh, group, nor do they have a dedicated membership manager, nor do they talk to them all the time anyways. So I think what we found was, I, I sometimes felt like we were resharing stuff like, right, and I would get so many emails, Erica would get so many emails back that said, thank you, thank you for sharing this, I didn't see this. Um, oh, okay, I think they were paying attention because of the relationship Erica has formed with all of you over the last uh, three years. 
So let's pause here on development. Any questions on development? Matt, I just wanna um, ask that if you are interested to become a partner with this Vermont Welcome Wagon Project, talking to new people moving into the area, um, I encourage you to do, do that. And it's like Matt said, you could simply meet somebody new who you wanna have a cup of coffee with, um, share interests. They, they fill out a form saying they're into outdoor fitness or they're into arts or whatever. And you're paired with somebody new. And it, we like to say that when somebody comes into the area, it's like a baseball game. We're bringing you in in the fifth inning versus starting off at square one. You've already made some contacts with um, key people in, in town and employers and um, stakeholders. So to keep that going is important. So check into the Vermont Welcome Wagon if you want to be one of those ambassadors for that. I, I encourage you. This is your slide, Erica, so I'm going to leave this to you. But uh, Beth, this talks a little bit about the left slide there is that distribution program too. Right. Um, and Beth had to hop off the call, but okay. I, we did send, I put the link in to find out more information on this. Now, um, as part of your membership, you are put on our website, you are included in the travel guide with a listing, but um, you know, you could make your your business stand out by buying an ad in the travel guide, which I'll be happy to help you with. Um, so that is, you know, that's one of the things that costs money, but then you have the community calendar where if you have an event coming up, please post it on there. We have so many people who come to our website daily, monthly, and if you receive our Friday e-blast, which you should, uh, and if you're not, please let me know. Uh, we pull a lot of that content from the community calendar. So if you're reading that Friday e-blast and you're like, well, you know, I had something happen last week. Why didn't that get on there? Post it to the community calendar first. And that, again, where we grab a lot of our content. And that is free. And it's read by a lot of people. Everyone on this call, I'm sure, reads the Friday e-blast, see what's happening this weekend and beyond. Now, if you have something happening in August, uh, it probably won't be in next week's e-blast. <laughs> we try to keep it, um, something happening in the next two weeks. So I, I encourage you to use that. We also, um, we have our Facebook page that we use, um, Instagram. Matt does an incredible job <laughs> keeping uh, uh, that active and we have how many followers now on Instagram? 66,000, something like that. Yeah. So that's, you know, you got something going on. Yeah. Tag yeah. us in it. Yeah. And you, you got people like that checking in and seeing it. So um, the State Welcome Center is another opportunity. If you're a member and you have RAC cards, please bring them up to the Welcome Center. It's free for members to put your RAC cards up there. Just stop in, see PJ at the front desk and um, she'll get those out there. But you also have the opportunity. We have, um, what are they? Three by three, two by three uh, hangings yeah. that you can buy a spot at. Not sure we have any available right now. Oh, yeah, we got some available. Jen, but, um, Nancy didn't take all of them. But. <laughs> um, you can have that posted displayed for a year for only $300, I think is the cost right now. And the amount of tourists that come through that Welcome Center. And if you haven't visited our Welcome Center, Matt and I say this every time we're on a call, it is a beautiful place uh, to go and visit. We have local products in the windows that are rotated out. Uh, it's a great space in the summertime to just go have your lunch away from everything because there's picnic tables, there's free Wi-Fi, there's free coffee, um, and there's PJ and her game who yeah. can talk to you about anything. So That um, Welcome Center sees about 130,000 people, believe it or not, every year. Um, and often and I will get the comment there, but there aren't that many cars there. And that is A, because it's a big parking lot. Why did you build a big, <laughs> big parking lot? And then I go, have you seen the rigs that pull into that parking lot? You try and turn an 18 wheeler and get it off of that, you know, hill 
so there's space there. Uh, but yeah, we see we see about 120, 130 thousand every year go through that spot. Um, just quickly looking down, uh, and if you want to get involved in the events and special promo programs, we're always happy to talk to you about that. Become a sponsor. Um, Poor Jen, I keep picking on you. Uh, uh, Jen has been a sponsor from our very first business to business golf tournament. And then her and Nancy come out and volunteer. So it gets to put a face with the sponsor. And, um, you know, it's a great way to keep your name out in front of people. And it's a great way to support, support the chamber, who in turn can reflect it back to the business community. And let me let me punch that one home, Eric. I was, and I'll, I'll let this group know secretly. Uh, I'll, you'll be the first to know. We're working for in May on a women's uh, women in leadership luncheon, uh, looking at doing it up in Manchester. And I'm talking with our primary promoter of this, our primary sponsor. And I said to them at the end of the call yesterday, I'm always surprised about the people that put money down, good money down, garlic fest, winter homebrew luncheon. And they show up for a welcome and they sit down. That's all they do. And I'm like, man, I would be wearing every Bank of Bennington Hoffman shirt that, you know, if you've got a staff and they're at the luncheon, they should be wearing their shirt. They should be actually, if we have eight tables of women around there, they, there should be one of them at each table. I said, use the sponsorship. You know, Eric and I are very big into um kind of the compounding effect of sponsorship. Yes, you bought a spot. Yes, your logo is big and it's above the, the banner there. But also, this is your show. And we're more than excited to welcome you to people and find creative ways to get more out of your sponsorship than just having your banner hung or on the website. And so, um, you know, I think Jen and, and others are a great example of, I bought, you know, sponsorship there. I showed up and volunteered. I played when I was there you know, and I showed up to the volunteer thing and had, you know, whatever that happens to be really compound um, that effort, that, that sponsorship. So think about that as well. And then the last thing I'll add, Erica, we, we often say this, <laughs> uh, participating from a promotion perspective at the chamber is on a spectrum. And the spectrum is free. You get it, if you're a member, to paid. And there is a spectrum. You can participate in the website and uh, stay welcome set a rack card and have your name in the travel guide and that's free you can do that for years if you want to and that's that's your right and we won't bother you uh you can go up a little bit more in that you can buy an ad you can buy a poster at the welcome center and you can move along that continuum all the way up to sponsorship uh, and sponsorship is probably the creme de la creme of of promotion uh and then you know, based on the event so um we are not hard sells but we do provide a platform for people to take advantage of, of as much as they want to, as comfortable as they are. Uh, and sometimes people have to build that up over time. We've seen some of our great sponsors start small and then over time uh, build uh, into uh, larger sponsors. Any questions on promotion at this point? So remember the State Welcome Center, variety of things you can do up there for free or cost, rack distribution program, Erica is going to start to reach out to you in the next couple months for the travel guide. And then all the other, you know, the free stuff, uh, especially the community calendar, huge. My question about the, um, is it the promotion is that sometimes it seems like uh, an event gets announced and there's already been the major sponsors and it would really, I feel like be more fair to all of the members that when you guys know that you're starting to put something together, to put it out there to everyone so that all the members have, you know, a fair chance at being that um, sponsor before that the spot that they wanted, you know, is already taken up. It feels like sometimes that happens to me often okay. and I then don't want to be the second real estate office. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah sponsoring something. Yeah. Sponsorship's a weird, it's a hard, it's, I don't recommend it to anybody. Uh, that's, what, that's why I do a lot of it. it, but I hear you, Jen. And, and sometimes I'm actually more cautious about, asking membership for money. And I don't want to come across as, if that came across as, hey, FYI, then we're happy to do that all the, you know, all the time. That's easy, that's an email. I think um, it I comes feel... across sometimes like certain people are being cherry picked. Okay. They're being asked because otherwise I don't know how they know about it and I don't. Okay, yep. 
So we'll, we, that's a, it's a easy thing to change. We'll start doing that. Um, by the way, we're going to be working on a women's leadership luncheon. Uh, if you'd like to be a part now, we do have, we needed a, a main sponsor. I don't think anybody is a competitor on this call of that main sponsor, but that gives us sometimes, especially in inaugural events, we need the, the, um, we need the kind of the permission, the cash permission to even think about doing something like this. So they're going to fork over a good amount of money. Uh, it's a bank, a semi-local bank. Uh, so I don't think anybody's in competition, but we will have um, small business sponsorships to fill in. Um, and Eric and I have thought about this for years. Uh, I don't know why who haven't done it, but um, we're really excited about this one. If we really launch, we'll know by next week and I'll let everybody know um, about the sponsorship opportunity soon about that. But um, we're looking at the Wednesday after Mother's Day, which I believe, like whatever that is. But anyways, we'll get more information out to you about that. But I, I hear you, Jen. That's encouraging to me. Finally, let's wrap up with advocacy. Uh, sometimes the, the, the most uh, ambiguous of, of the tasks that we have. And we're you know, to some degree amateurs at it, you know, uh, we don't have a lobbyist. Uh, we're not the Vermont Chamber. We rely heavily on people like Betsy Bishop and the Vermont Chamber um, to, you know, be our eyes and ears up at the State House. But I think over the last six years, we've really, we've heard from our members and they want a little bit more representation. And so why do we do this? We do it to represent our small business and nonprofits, local, state, national level, when you guys are busy, you don't have time. So if we can condense things and make things a little bit more simpler or or kind of a one hour time with Dick Sears and Brian Campion and the representatives, then that maybe that, that helped you a little bit as opposed to calling all of them up. So one, you have an executive director. Um, if I'm not building a program or an event or doing something like this, I'm most likely, you know, talking to uh, any type of advocacy, whether that be the Energizer building, the the economic development that's happening there or up in Manchester, or the economic development that's happening in Arlington, or being on a call with governor or governor's representative. Um, so I think in general, sometimes when people say, where does all my 300 or $400 go in my membership? And obviously we just sent you this whole slideshow. So it goes all there, but also at the very least, uh, you have somebody at the table for you. Uh, that to me is some of, some of the most simplest part of it. Uh, if, if not, you weren't paying those dues, you wouldn't have anybody there. Um, we obviously also try and get you connected with legislators, which is our round tables or even one-on-ones. Um, we, a couple of years ago, we did industry round tables with our legislators um, so they could hear specific to retail or real estate or anything like that. I sit on a couple of the governor's councils. Um, so obviously representation there. Um, we're also the media and press agent, which has very little to do with government or, or, or legislature, but like other than some of your key people like Jenny or John, who else is promoting the region? Who else is promoting the area? Not just for a place to come visit for a weekend, but for a place to live. Uh, so oftentimes, whether it's the success of the state of state program or you know all the business optimism that's happening right now, and nobody else would be covering those stories as a chamber of commerce would do. We also believe in catalytic leadership. I've talked about that before. Basically, catalytic leadership uh, is, is leadership that gives other people permission to be leaders. Um, it, 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 it's catalytic. It starts something. The, the Putnam Project started something. It took four or five people at the table, uh, the bank, the hospital, some small businesses, uh, the colleges. That was catalytic leadership. It gave more people to invest. And now you see that, whether that's the middle school in downtown, uh, the coffee shops, the angry egg that's about to open. I mean, all of these things have been greatly sprinkled up. And part of that is they want to be part of a winning team. They want to be part of that winning leadership. Uh, and, and we see that also in, in Manchester. We see it in Arlington with the Arlington Commons. We put people got together. Now there's going to be some excitement going on. And then finally, I think from an advocacy perspective, as we talked about in the beginning, it starts with the membership up top but quickly you guys elect representatives. And so those board of directors are also your advocates too. Uh, we're going through a situation right now where there's an industry that we're gonna have to figure out how to you know, smooth some feathers over. Board of directors is around that to kind of figure out how to solve that problem uh, and SYP board as well. Any questions on advocacy at the moment? 
we, uh, if you go to the advocacy page, I think Eric has put it in there. We've done some really neat things with that in the last couple weeks, which is you can schedule a meeting with me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we have bills to watch. So we're trying to up those, uh, update those as much as possible with also giving you the link to the exact bill. Again, we will connect you. <laughs> we won't solve the bill or try and give you our, our, our impression of it, but here's the bill on housing. Here's the bill on uh, childcare, things that we think are gonna be impactful for our members. So I would start to go to that page, check it out. Um, and also we give you uh, links to talk to your local representatives or legislators. So if you like never got there, I never had that email, who, how do I get in touch with Brian Campion or Dick Sears? Well, it's there now. So uh, we've been working on that a little bit more. Hey Matt, I just have a really quick question. Well, it's probably not a quick question. The length of the question is quick. The answer is very complex. Okay. But how does the chamber speak about economic development with regards to, um, and I ask this also knowing that there are at least two realtors on today's call, housing. Because I, can't, I cannot go through my workday or my personal life whether I'm at my kitchen counter or in the den without having some kind of um, exposure to a conversation about the dire mm -hmm. state of housing in Bennington County. Yep. Uh, yeah, that is a topic we're having a lot. Um, uh, you know, we we uh, we were at the housing summit with Seth Bongart and um, and the team there. So we've we did, we've had three or four housing conversations. You know, I I think Betsy Bishop said it, and I'm gonna I'm not I'm not gonna say it the way she said it, um, but I so appreciated her kind of realism around it, which is going to be time and effort or something like that, or time and process. Like there won't be a magic wand. We will not solve this. This is probably a 10 to 20 year problem. Now, what is interesting is in Bennington County, we're often pretty well known about our 10 to 20 year old problems. Uh, and what's encouraging is we've started to fix some of those 10 to 20 year old problems. Um, I think the, the, the silver lining uh, potentially is in, um, I'll, ta I'll tack it from macroeconomics and microeconomics. The silver lining in macro is you have $4 billion coming to Vermont. You had two billion in the um, in the first relief funding, and then you have two billion coming in the second wave, which is the Build Back Better plan. That'll do infrastructure. That's going to do childcare. That's I mean, the 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 general budget of all of Vermont and everything we run, human service, everything, and some of you probably know this is about six billion, seven billion. We're getting four billion. Imagine getting that. Getting 60 to 70 percent of your budget, which we're still going to have a budget. We're actually going to have one of the most aggressive budgets in Vermont history, too. And probably what Governor Scott's thinking is, let's triple down on the bet. The bet is we've got a bunch of cash and we need to build some things. And you know what? The administration needs to put in some skin in the game, too. So what you'll see, I think it's a seven point six billion dollar budget. It's the largest one in Vermont history, um, which is going to partner with that two that you know we've already spent some of the two billion from uh, the original fund um, and then there'll be more two billion and what will be interesting is the second two billion is probably going to be more around infrastructure I would assume housing represents infrastructure so I think that's macro I think the micro Erica you and I've talked about it uh, you know it's one expanse that we've talked about I we can't wrap our brain around yet but would be kind of a constructors guild or you know, use our power of connection to get you know, what we can together um, from builders to architects, to planners, to developers, kind of together to handle some of these crises. Um, that's from a chamber perspective, probably what we would be best at as opposed to regional commission who could probably help with more of the planning. I think uh, Seth and Kathleen did a, the best job that they could have, which was kind of like, here's the challenge. And we got all these smart people in, in the same room. And guess what? Four hours later, we had not solved the housing crisis. I, uh, I appreciate your comment about the macro level and the 
and from the chamber's perspective. Thank you for answering the question. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I think, so part of that micro is potentially gathering some of our construction people for whatever, and, and I'll use construction kind of broadly, to be realtors to construction, not for all I care. People that have to deal with housing, <laughs> that help build and sell housing all in one room. Uh, but I think also stay to stay. And I think the Vermont Welcome Wagon, uh, and I think the young professional. I think something in all that, the retention and recruitment effort from a micro level, so I'm not, you know, we're not trying to give it more airtime. What do I want to say? We're sometimes we just talk about it, and I think those three programs actually do it a little bit, little bit by little bit. But we've added 12 families last year from the state and state program. There's 12 more families in the county. That's great. Those those people get sent to schools, have housing, that sort of thing, and maybe one of them is a, an electrician or plumber. So I think there's all that, and then I think some of the other micro is our partnership um, with the CDC, with uh, with Southwest Tech um, and any effort that we can help around that. I, I actually just got off a phone call last um, week with a, with a family from Texas. They're, they want to move up here. Their husband is doing an interview with Southwest Tech for CNC and manufacturing training. And it's just like, it's one of those serendipitous things where you're like, ah, oh, this actually works. We can actually, and it's going to be very micro. One step at a time, we're going to bring one plumber back up here. We're going to bring one attorney that sells houses back up here. Because I know Jen and Eric and uh, uh, everybody else, Lori, are reeling for attorneys and, and adjusters and things like that. So, Jen, I know you had your hand up too, so I want to make sure we get to that. Yeah, I just want to say, um, I think that housing is on the one hand outside of the scope of the chamber. And on the other hand, I think it there couldn't be anything more integral because we cannot have a robust economy if we don't have a place to house people. Um, I definitely think that where the chamber could kind of spearhead this um, and still be within the scope of their sort of responsibilities is in the partnership and in the collaboration, the connection piece of it. You know, we definitely need not only more houses for individual people, but we need more rental housing. And that means multifamily mm -hmm. housing developments. And there definitely are lots of land for sale. Um, there are you know, places where we could add more uh, rental units. However, uh, it is not necessarily something that me as a realtor and my husband as a builder want to become landlords to something like that. You know, But if there was a partnership between um, you know, a private contractor, investor, and someplace like the John Hale or Shires or someone who would then take over the management piece of it, um, I think that that's the way to go. Um, because I don't, I don't see us solving this by just one person saying, I'm going to buy it, build it, and run it. I, I just don't see that happening. So there's also, you know, Vermont State Housing Authority, which is um, also known as Section 8, um, so that's, I, I think, needs to be a player at the table. And again, I know that those sorts of organizations are beyond your scope, um, but we do need to have a place for everyone to live if they're going to stay working here. Yeah. It's a common issue that, you know, all of us realtors are hearing is that people can't afford to live here. And I have to say, I have such an ethical conflict between all of the sellers who've hired me, especially lately, I, I have a lot of tenant occupied buildings that are for sale. Mm. And all those tenants know that they are likely getting the boot. Uh, and I don't know where they're going to go. And I, so there's a conflict. I've been hired to do a job to sell a property. And that's my fiduciary responsibility. But I feel this moral dilemma about where are those tenants going to go if they can't stay local, we're kicking people out of town. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, um, I'm wondering, when we put a bug in, 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 in your ear, Jen, and maybe Lori and, and others uh, that want to be interested, I mean, let's, so let's connect. Let's, you know, let's do at the, at the ground level, let's do a housing committee to the chamber. It just says, you know, is there a Zach Hale and somebody that represents share housing? Um, and I think all the while, and I think we're, we do this well, what I, you know, I don't want to reduplicate uh, efforts that people feel like, well, we're already getting together talking about housing all the time. I often find that the uh, chamber does two things, adds an interesting spin to it. We add an interesting spin because I've been to about four housing 
um, summit so far in the last two years, and I don't see any realtors represented. Wait, say that again. I've been to about four housing summits in the last two years, and I don't see any realtors who are actually selling the houses represented. Wow. I don't see them on a panel. I don't see them in the audience. And so to me, and I'm not picking on And these are state? Um, state? Yeah, they were state. They were um, local. There was one at the Arlington Common. I'm hopping on a phone about housing. And I think what the chamber often does is we have that ability to bring in the eclectic mix. Of, we didn't think about the attorneys that sell houses or the banks that sell mortgages. Are they there? So like, let's talk about from conception of house to sale of house. And let's just get all those people in the same room. And somewhere we're probably gonna find some magic happen where Jen goes, oh, wait a minute, Jim Brown, Tom Daly, or you know her husband who built houses. Yeah. You know, I mean, that to me is the full spectrum that we've got a lot of you know, smart people in terms of housing planning up at those meetings at the committees. But I think a chamber could add a different flair to it, which would be the common person who is dealing with houses, the, the, the attorneys, uh, the, the appraisers, which we have very little of. I mean, there's also another conversation about that, which is um, how to do specific even state to state weekends where we're asking for the housing what I want to call it, the housing professionals. Hey, you're in Texas, you're in California, you're in Oregon, you're looking at moving to Vermont, and you happen to be a carpenter, an electrician, a plumber, a realtor, an attorney. Uh, could we entice you? Could we market to you specifically to move to our section? What we can't handle all of Vermont, but we could handle Southwestern Vermont. And if we could put two more attorneys into the mix, that might alleviate some of our current attorneys. Anyways, uh, Jen, I'm, you know, I think, uh, I think uh, let's connect um, about this and if people would be interested in that, you know, and I think it can be ad hoc committee. Right now, the pain is workforce and housing. So let's have a workforce committee and a housing committee. Matt, I also want to just interject that this yeah. is also on the radar at our state level. Um, if you read Vermont Digger last week, there was a, a gentleman who owns a construction company and wanted to make not affordable housing as like the Shires, but um, housing for his employees. Like they, they're working hard, they should have their own home. So he bought a parcel, he started doing the legwork, finding out Act 250, doing the permitting. By the time he got done with all the costs, he could not sell those homes to his employees at a, at a price that they could afford and that he could recoup his money. Mm -hmm. So there is a discussion beginning saying, okay, we do want to create this housing. Like, are you going to help the contractors at least make break even so that they can in turn sell this to um, uh, somebody who's working? There's, there's a difference between the workforce housing and the affordable housing. Um, and that, that gap can be quite a bit for somebody who's you know, working a full 40 hour a week job. So it's, if you jump onto Vermont Digger, I think it was like Monday, maybe, maybe it was last week, but there is that conversation starting. So that's something we could ask our legislators. That could be, that'd be a great, that'd be a great impetus to bring a committee together. Let's, yep. uh, let's use that article as a, you know, a match. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I, like I said, I, Want to get you out of here at 9 30. I appreciate those that hung on. Um, again, this is our first time, so we're really just feeling out the timing uh, on this. But um, to kind of wrap up the membership meeting, um, we came up with Matt and Erica's five easy peas, because it's easy peasy to get involved. Uh, we think of those as presence, participation, promotion, partner, and performing. Um, and I'll send these slides out to everybody after in, in note form so you, you know. Don't forget like to jot down everything. But simply put, presence, show up. Erica says this all the time. Like the ones that show up, obviously the ones on this call, that's half the battle. Literally, it's half the battle. Show up tonight. You will be a better business owner. You will be a better nonprofit leader if you just start participating. And we have some of those champions on this call that can speak to it, that are, have already spoken to it. Just show up. And that's the hardest part, right? I'm running a business. I'm a nonprofit. And, you know, Eric and my job is to make sure that we're the most fun organization to come to after hours or before hours. So, um, but show up. 
Second part is participation or volunteer. Um, you know, go to all the trainings, all the education, go to this class, whatever, you know, you can do that. Probably the way you're going to get the heart impacted, not the brain, the heart impacted is through your volunteerism. Um, so come out to Garlic Fest, come out to, you come volunteer with us for a committee. I mean, that to me is volunteering, you know, Jen volunteering her time um, to, to be on the committee, Lori volunteering. Um, then go into promotion. So now we've kind of, you've shown up, you've sort of got involved, you maybe volunteered once or twice on a thing, um, and then decide how you want to advertise from free to cost. Um, and then I think there's this partnership piece where somebody comes in and always the best example to me was when Will Gardner came into my office and you know uh, we used to get, you know what you need to do about once a week uh, you know, the event that we need to bring back to Bennington, we see that once a week. And Will came in with a four page plan for this thing called Wings and Winter Homebrew. He said, I'd love to partner with the chamber to do this. And so here we are five, six years later. Uh, and it is just this kind of really unique, iconic uh, brand of a festival that we do. Um, but do something with us. Uh, you know, it, Women's Leadership Luncheon is another good example. Bank came to us, we, we were talking. I said, oh, our staff has always wanted to do this lunch and we just never had the, the gasoline to throw in that fire. And I said, we want to do that. Great, let's partner together. Um, and you don't have to hop to partnership. You can always just start by showing up. You can start by advertising, um, come to a class like this, um, but eventually you can partner with us. And then I think, you know, the, the last kind of way to get involved, the most important, you know, kind of the highest part of that peak is to become a leader at the chamber. Um, and that can be being on a committee all the way to being a board member to being a president of the Chamber of Commerce Board. So not everybody makes it there. You're not supposed to make it all there. Um, but those are you know, just kind of five easy ways to start to get involved based on the information we shared with you today. Um, and with that, I don't wanna keep you much longer, but let's open it up to any Q&A. Um, and Erica, anything else you wanna add? I think we've covered a lot of stuff here and I'd be interested to see if there's something that um, you were hoping to get from this and that we, we missed it. So let us know if that is what happened. It's a lot of information to take in and digest. And so having the access to this afterwards and the slides, um, if you think of something, you know, let us know. A lot of people don't like to talk in front of a group. So yeah. <laughs> feel free to message us privately as well. And I'm just writing a note. I, I see, you know, both Denise, um, you talked about a workforce committee. I think that that would be neat too. There's no reason we can't do that. You know, this again is your chamber. So um, let's, uh, you know, Denise, maybe you and I will go offline on an email, we'll throw around a couple of names. That would be great. You know, I, I recognize Victoria saying, you know, make sure there's Northshire people on that. <laughs> it's totally our job uh, to do. So we will make sure on both of those you know, ad hoc committees, there's nothing, you know, we're, we're there to solve problems and commiserate or, or champion together. Uh, I'm not sure we'll solve the whole housing problem or whole workforce, but, you know, there's been discussion around uh, workforce sharing too, which would be kind of interesting if you could share a person. Um, so anyways, we will close with that. Thank you everybody for hopping on. You have both our contacts. We will send you the slideshow. Uh, so you just have that as well. And, uh, and get involved. Come out tonight or uh, stay tuned for some of the things that are coming down uh, the pike for the chamber. Thank you guys very much. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Have a great day.